Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today I want to do a quick uh, do a quick little video for you guys about Xavi leaving Barcelona for this season. So I'm gonna give you guys my reaction, my thoughts, my opinion. So am I surprised with the news? Kind of and kind of no. And let me explain why I feel this way. It's kind of odd for me to say this, right? So let me elaborate myself and explain myself. Well, the first of all, the reason why I'm not so surprised is because of how bad we've been this season. You know, there's been so much pressure for Xavi to do things. There's been a lot of criticism, you know, and we've just been playing really awful this season. And we're likely to go trophyless this season. Now, in the event that we don't go trophyless this season, it will be a miracle. And obviously, we'll go celebrating like crazy. The chances of that happening, though, is very slim. Let's keep it a stack. Now, I am a bit surprised, though, that he made this decision just now in the middle of the season in January, when technically we still have two trophies to win this season. La Liga and Champions League, even if it's mathematically, even if our chances are still slim, right? I would have expected him to say something like, oh, I'm going to resign at the end of the season, maybe when we get eliminated from the Champions League, supposedly. But I think Xavi really knows that the chance of that happening is not happening, you know? And my issue with Javi in particular is the fact that he keeps saying these kind of words after the game and his post-match interviews and saying that, oh, we didn't deserve to lose. We deserve to win. Um, we should have had a penalty for us. The refs weren't in our favor and this kind of stuff. And that kind of thing is that, I'm sorry, you can't be using the referees as an excuse. Just own up to the loss and say that, yeah, we deserve to loss. Because there's been some games this season where we did not deserve, we deserved to lose. Like, for example, Barca versus Athletic Bilbao, just on Wednesday. We thoroughly deserved to lose to Athletic Bilbao. Athletic Bilbao were the much better team for, like, 85% of the game. So that's my issue with Xavi, is that he doesn't have accountability. He keeps trying to deflect it. Now, I will give Xavi some credit that he actually did own up to himself and say, you know what, I think it's time for me to resign. You know, and rather than wait for the inevitable to happen, he decided, you know what? I'm going to just resign myself because Kuman and Valverde never said anything like this. They're like, hey, I'm going to just keep continuing and um, I'll just see what happens. And if you guys don't like it, you do it yourself. I'm not going to make that decision. Even if they were told countless times to, hey, please reconsider. And when the season was just back, they were eventually sacked by the board. So I give Xavi that credit that, hey, he actually decided to own up, you know, and he actually does care about Barca. You know, he actually does genuinely care about Barca and believes that he just isn't the, no longer the right fit for the club. And when you're at a Barcelona coach, there's so much more pressure upon you compared to other clubs. Like, for example, if you coach Barcelona, let's say you're coaching Barcelona and someone coaches Real, um, let's say like Chelsea. There is more pressure on Barcelona coach than a Chelsea coach. Obviously, there is pressure at Chelsea. I'm not saying there's no pressure. Obviously, there is. But compared to Barca, the pressure is com is considerably higher. It's considerably, considerably higher. The expectation of Barca is also considerably higher than Chelsea. Because Barcelona is one of the biggest clubs in the world. They're one of the biggest. Them and Real Madrid. There is no arguing against that. You know, and I just feel like for me, when there's so much pressure and expectation, everything falls on manager, you know. And Xavi made those decisions. He backed those players. He backed the likes of Romeo. He backed the likes of Rafinha and these kind of players. And they just haven't delivered. They haven't failed. They haven't performed up to standard, you know. And yes, you can criticize Xavi for the player accusation, for the player talent, his talent ID, and this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, the real issue with Barcelona isn't really Xavi. It's really Juan Laporta. Because Laporta made a lot of those decisions short-term minded. He didn't really think about the future at the, at the time. For example, when we got when we got uh, Ori Romeo in, it was just a stopgap signing. It wasn't really here for a long term. We should have just made we should have just not got a DM and we should have just saved the money and go for a really quality DM next summer. Instead of spending like I think we spent like 10 million. We should have just saved the money and just say we use it for next summer. You know, and this kind of stuff, you know. I could go on and on, but the thing, but you guys get the general point. Joao Laporta is also at fault for this. I actually blame a lot of the issues on Barca this season, primarily on the board. The board actually takes around majority of the blame here. 
obviously Javi also needs to get blamed. Obviously, like I said, like I said, his credit managerial skills are just not up to date. But here's the thing, though: you can't really blame Javi for his managerial skills when we already knew coming into the job that Javi had very limited experience. He just coached Al Saad. Al Saad didn't really do that well in the Asian Champions League, but I believe they did well in the domestic league, which is kind of what we're seeing with Barca. We've been doing great domestically, but crap in the Champions League. You know. That kind of thing. So there was already warning signs here from the beginning. And like I said before, guys, at the time when Javi was appointed, I was not for the sign for the decision. I actually wanted Eric Ten Hag. Eric Ten Hag, I thought, would have been a much better choice. And I thought Eric Ten Hag would have actually been more of a he would actually fit better for Barca than uh Javi. And if you guys don't believe me, you guys can check my previous videos. I actually have legitimate evidence. But getting back to Javi here, I just think that for Barca in particular and for Javi, it's just, I just feel like for me, the problem with, the problem is the season just hasn't gone according to plan. You know, we just haven't been able to find a structured identity to play through. Because at the end of the day, when you watch your team play, there should be a clear structure, a clear game plan to see how the team operates. You should be able to know what your team is going to be doing, right? It does feel as like a Barca... There is no tactics and nothing set up like that. It's just hope and just just play the best that we can and just go by instinct. You know, I could tell that we're trying to play possession based football. I think that's kind of the goal. It's just it's just not as effective as the old Barca team is. You know, and obviously, like I said, the players are just not good enough. I mean, we let's keep it a stack, guys. You know, the players are not good enough. And if you give a different coach this time. Obviously, things will get better. If you give if you give a top coach this amount of players and the board, he probably gets better results. We probably do better. But the grand scheme of things, it's going to stay the same. Until we see a massive change from the board, then trying to plan for the long term, or we get quality players, or really, really good players, like world-class players that are at the right age, right time, then everything's going to still pretty much stay around the same level. Maybe things will get a little bit better. Maybe instead of being and uh, maybe we'll be like a little bit close to Real Madrid when it comes to fighting La Liga, you know, and the fact that we're 10 points behind Real Madrid in La Liga is actually embarrassing. How are you 10 points behind your rival just halfway through the season? It's only been half of the games. You haven't even, you haven't even played the majority of the season. You're already 10 points behind. It's quite shocking. It's quite frightening. You know, and this kind of thing is just unacceptable. I'm sorry. It's just unacceptable. For a club of Barcelona's magnitude, you cannot be 10 points behind your rivals. It's just unacceptable. And considering Real Madrid is a club that usually don't win a lot of Liga titles, we are usually the ones to win it. It's even more, it's even more um, scrutinizing. So now the question for Barca is this. This season is pretty much practically finished. We are basically now fighting for top four this season. And if we don't get top four this season, this season is a complete and utter failure. It's a failure. You know, and I just think that for Barca in particular, we're going to have to, we have to get top four this season. That's pretty much all the objective is. Get top four, see how far we go in the Champions League, and hope we don't get pimp slapped. And hopefully, maybe we can finish in the top three. Maybe, preferably top two, to come be in the Spanish Super Cup next season. Because remember, guys, if we don't finish top two, we're not going to be in the Spanish Super Cup next season. And there's a genuine possibility we're not going to get Spanish Super Cup next season. So, I just want to know what you guys think, man. I just want to know what you guys think in the comments below, man. Because, like I said, man, this just situation just been really bad obviously Xavi has a lot to be blamed you know as far as um favoritism you know keep using the same players again and again like the likes of Lewandowski you know keep persistent players like Roberto Yamal etc I can go on and on but I think the general notion that we have here is that he just wasn't the guy for the job he just wasn't and you know I will I have I we should appreciate what he's done as a manager though because we have done well domestically you know we obviously won La Liga with him and we managed to get second place in our in his first season here well, we had a garbage season that season. You know, we were ninth by the time he came. And so you had to give him that credit that we were able to almost win La Liga from a position that we had literally no chance to. But obviously, the bigger the bigger issue is that it just wasn't the long-term coach. He just wasn't it. He was only here to do a rebuild for us. And he just wasn't really here to win us the Champions League and that kind of stuff, you know. So, and I think he did the best he could with this team. So, like I said, hopefully um, Barca learns from this. Hopefully we don't get any managers hopefully we don't get um former players or managers legendary players because you can see that right now that legendary players just don't work as managers legendary players just don't work you're just not going to get another Pep Guardiola situation and I think that's what maybe the Barca board was hoping that he would be the next Pep Guardiola and it just isn't Pep Guardiola is just like once in a lifetime it's not going to be repeated again 
So remember guys to like and subscribe. Please let me know your guys' thoughts and comments below. I'll be looking through your guys' comments and uh, responding to the ones that um that I have anything to add to. So if you guys did enjoy, please remember to like and subscribe, of course. Comment below your thoughts, comment below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.